Welcome to Ask the Expert North Texas. I'm David Rankin. There has been talk of the great resignation and how there are so many jobs. Unemployment's down around three and a half percent. People are shuttling from job to job, depending on everything from workplace culture to making more money. And it seems that the employees seem to have a little bit more control. But there seems to be one generation that is left out of this great jockeying for jobs, and that's older workers. And of course, then there's the younger workers. Let's just call it a sandwich between. I'm joined by workplace culture expert Frank Danny's in the KRLD Zoom room. Frank, thank you so much for taking the time. David, I'm very excited to be here and, and looking forward to unpacking what's going on here with these sandwiched generations. Let's talk about this. Let's start with the two sides of the bread. Let's start with the older generation. Why are older workers getting left out of all of the hiring that's going on? There are companies desperate for workers. Very true. And I think it actually goes back to the way that older generations have been brought up in working in different environments. They're just not comfortable. And there's a certain amount of risk that comes with leaving a job that you may have had for 5, 10, 20, 30 plus years. So for those in the older generations right now, it's a little bit more risky because they have a lot more to lose. We're talking about mortgages. We're talking about families to take care of and provide for. Those 401ks, all the stuff that they've been able to build up over the course of the past few decades uh, is at risk. And so it's a lot more risky to jump jobs now for our older generations. And they're not actually taking part in this great resignation as often as the younger generations, millennial and Gen Z. Well, what about the companies themselves? Why aren't the companies investing in older workers and looking for workers that they know will stick around and will not be job hopping? You know, that's a great question. And I think it comes down to the willingness for people to be approachable when it comes to jumping into new jobs. And I do believe that there is a market for highly skilled individuals moving from one job to another. But I think folks are still very hesitant in this inflationary period and what's happening in the marketplace right now to really jump out there. What I've seen is that companies are willing to hire those more skilled and more experienced people. But Unfortunately, in the older generations, they're not moving as quickly uh, and taking advantage of this moment as often as younger generations are. Kiplinger put out a list of some reasons and myths why companies don't hire older workers. Why don't you get your reaction to some of these? One, yep. older workers are not as effective in the workplace as younger workers are. Uh, I think it comes down to how you define effectiveness. When it comes to opportunities to lead people and the experiences that they have, I think the older workers are going to be necessary to help lead people and bring people up and from a mentor and leadership perspective. If we're talking about like lifting thousand pound objects, obviously, yes, that's not going to be as effective. But when it comes to older workers, we have to think about the knowledge base that comes along with an individual that's been a part of something for a long time and being able to properly tap into that knowledge base and understand their exposure to what they've experienced before is actually very important and very valuable. And one thing about older workers as well is they do tend to take fewer days off for sickness. They tend to be a bit more dedicated to the place where they're working as well. I feel like Gen Z, uh, the youngest generation in the workplace, now we're talking about people born from 1997 to about 2012. Okay, so the, day, the age range is like 10 years old to 26, 27, right? That age range is much more... Um, focused on work-life balance. So they're going to be taking more time off. Like you mentioned, they're going to be looking at work as their part-time role and their life as their full-time role. Whereas in older generations, the opposite is true. Uh, they're less, they're going to be less focused on taking off days for vacations. Um, and that means that companies can, can utilize their talents more often. Can't companies also look at older workers as more mentors for the younger generation as well? I think they have to. And if we're not taking advantage of that expertise and that knowledge base that the older workers are bringing to the table, we're missing out on a chance to deliver and kind of connect the dots and move things faster in the long run, because then you create that generational connection, right, between an older generation and a younger generation. And if we can bridge that gap and make it stop making it us versus them, you actually have an incredible opportunity to create momentum. If that knowledge from the older generations can be passed down to a younger generation that's open and willing to receive it, you got speed on your hands, and then you can start making some really innovative changes in your workplace. Will companies start looking towards older workers as they need to fill roles in their companies if it's not for? Now, obviously, they can't stay for 30, 40 years, but they can at least fill a spot for upwards of 10 I'm hoping so, but right now what we're starting to see is a slight slowdown 
uh, in the hiring process. And for those that are higher skilled, um, imagine people that are going to be asking for the most money in terms of coming into new organizations. There may not be as many roles available now as there were a few months ago. So the consideration here for older workers is to just focus on looking for opportunities if you're wanting to look for a new job uh, that fills the need and the void when it comes to a culture fit as well. They may not be being able to pay as much as you want from transitioning from, from your current job to the next job, but there could be better environments to work in that would be better suited to your pace. Let's talk about the other half of the sandwich here, the Gen Z and, and the younger workers. They seem to be more interested, uh, uh, one, in pay, but there's something coming out as well, talking about how they're looking at companies that have a similar mission to what they mean, to what they uh, follow. What kind of mission are we talking about? So if a company really wants to recruit and retain Gen Z, they need a mission that improves the lives of the people and the world around them. And that mission needs to align with how you treat your team and how you treat your customers. And so Gen Z are looking for philanthropic endeavors or companies quite simply that just have a mission to improve the lives of people. Now, what's happening is there's a lot of uh, student loan debt. There's a lot of inflation. There's financial worries that are hitting Gen Z. Now, if we're talking about the sandwich side, if there's a, a tremendous amount of risk for the older generations, there's far less risk in terms of Gen Z being able to jump jobs and move on from place to place. And so even though there are lots of financial burdens that Gen Z are running into, they're also able to move and be more flexible. So if a company isn't aligning to the vision and mission and values that the Gen Zs have, they're more likely to jump ship much faster. You talked about how hiring is starting to slow down a little bit. Let's bring up remote work. More companies are saying, we want you to start coming back to the office and, and the hybrid model might be the one that lasts, but you get some companies say, for example, Tesla. Tesla, yep. Elon Musk says, if you're an executive and you're not in the office five days a week, find another job. You know, Tesla is building physical things. And uh, what Elon mentioned in his emails to his team is he's on the floor walking with his employees and his team members, the factory team members that are building the products because they are building physical things that you need physical individuals for. But if you're working in an environment where it's mostly knowledge-based workers uh, and you're able to work from an remote environment, companies being able to offer that advantage and that flexibility will bring in the best Gen Z talent because you're not limited to a particular region geographically or otherwise. We became used to remote working, if, especially in offices around the country, thanks to the pandemic. And then it became a hybrid, hybrid model as some companies are having their workers come in, say one or two days a week. Can that be sustained for any length of time? I believe that it can be, and that flexibility can be achieved if you create the right type of environment in your company. And what I'm saying by that is that a lot of times, um, you know, you have to be thinking about how is the organization, how is a leader actually working? So is a leader operating from that hybrid model, or are they going into work five days a week? Because if they're doing that, their expectations are that you're going to follow the suit. So take note of how your leaders are acting and operating. If they're more flexible and are actually doing something similar, that means that there's a little bit more leeway for you to do something as well. And if they say that they're okay with a hybrid model of, you know, three days in the office and two days at home, but they're not following it as well, they're not, they're, they're honestly not really going to be focusing on letting that be a long-term thing. They talk about bringing workers back into the office because it allows for more camaraderie, more, you know, joint brainstorming if you're face to face as opposed to sitting in front of a camera in a meeting. Are meetings different with a Zoom versus in person? They absolutely are. And that's why it takes a tremendous amount of additional effort to build that community and that relationship and that culture with your team members. My company is fully remote. We went remote as a result of the pandemic, and we're still having to meet in person as frequently as possible, just not in an office setting. So we've got to be creative with the way that we engage with each other. But the short answer is, yes, it is different, and it takes more intentionality to create those relationships if done virtually. Frank Dana is a workplace culture expert on Ask the Expert. Thanks for the time. Thank you so much, David.